Hello, and welcome to my Stitch and Addiction channel. Whether you are a new viewer or a returning viewer, I am so glad that you are here. Today's video is a sewing tutorial, and I hope that you will find it helpful in your sewing journey. It's been a while since I've done one of these sewing tutorials, so I'm super excited to offer a new one to you. This one today is based on Eleanor's apron in the 1995 Sense and Sensibility movie. So that is a Regency apron. I've been researching Regency aprons for another purpose, another upcoming project I have planned. And along the way, I came across her apron. If you've watched the movie, I'm sure that you, like me, were struck with her simple apron that she wears to go out and work with the plants in front of their cottage. This apron is striking for a couple of reasons. One, because it is simple and yet it is very feminine. And two, because it looks like it would still be something practical that you could wear today. So it would be a perfect history bounding article to add to your wardrobe. Now, as you know, I like to be historically accurate with my designs. I may not always be historically accurate with my fabric choices or with my sewing techniques, but I do like to make sure that my designs are historically accurate. That is, that they actually existed in some form in the past. So I went on a research journey in order to see if this apron actually existed in Regency period or if this is just an apron that was designed for the movie. So I found several fashion plates that are from the era, the early 1800s, that actually are very similar to Eleanor's apron. So the first one I found is a penner apron this is a style that was carried over from the 18th century and the bib of the apron would be pinned with straight pins to the dress in order to hold it up. I also found a fashion plate that shows the back of the apron. We cannot see the front, we can't see the bib or the skirt, but you can see that the straps crisscross across her back and the ties tie in the back. So this shows me that not only did they have the pinner aprons that were carried over from the 18th century, but they also added straps to these so that they no longer had to pin them in place. Finally, I found a fashion plate with an apron that looks extremely similar to Eleanor's apron. It has the bib, it has straps that go up and over the shoulders, and I'm assuming crisscross in the back. And so therefore, I do think that this apron is a historically accurate design. Now that I know that this apron is a historically accurate design, I'm excited to offer a tutorial and a downloadable pattern for you so that you can sew along with me and make your own Eleanor Regency apron. So in order to do this, you're going to need to do a couple of steps before we jump into the actual tutorial of cutting and sewing the apron. First, you will need to click on the link in the description box below to download the pattern. And then you will need to size that pattern up and I will show you exactly how to do that in this tutorial. Of course, the other thing that you will need to do is you will need to get some fabric. So let's talk about fabric choices for our apron. Cotton was an extremely popular textile during the Regency period, partly because it was the cheapest option available and it was very easy to get. This is for many different reasons and it's very interesting to research. If you have time to research that, I would highly recommend researching why cotton was the preferred textile during the Regency era. But I'm not gonna go into further discussion in that in this video today. Another textile that was still in use was linen and that's actually what I'm choosing for my apron, you can choose cotton or linen or whatever suits your fancy, but I am going to use a tan midweight linen that I was able to find on a Facebook D-stash group. I think a lightweight linen would work just as well 
for this apron, but I had this already in my stash and I didn't want to go out and buy something new when I already had something. And so you want to get your fabric and you want to go ahead and wash and dry and iron it. Whether it's cotton or linen, I highly recommend that you wash and dry it before cutting it so that it takes care of shrinkage. With linen, it's actually advisable that you wash it twice because linen actually shrinks more than cotton and sometimes linen can be rough and so washing it twice will soften it up to the softness that we're more used to wearing today. As far as yardage for this apron, you're gonna need between a yard and a half to two yards. A yard and a half should be enough, but if you wanna have a little extra on hand, just in case of any mistakes, I would recommend getting two yards to be on the safe side. So once you have your pattern downloaded and printed, and you have your fabric washed and dried and ironed, we are ready to go on the next step of the tutorial, which is sizing up your pattern. All right, so this is the pattern that you should have downloaded and printed from the description box below. Each square on this pattern represents a inch, and not only did I draw it on the graph paper with each square representing an inch, I also wrote in the measurements along each side of each piece. As you can see, this apron is just a collection of rectangular pieces. And so if you want to get tracing paper and draw these on tracing paper, if that makes you feel more comfortable, if you are a beginner seamstress, any of those things, I would definitely recommend that you do that. However, if you have a cutting board like this one right here, I will also link that in the description box below that has the inches drawn on it, I would recommend that you just lay your fabric out on that cutting board and cut it according to the lines on the cutting board. And I'm gonna show you how to do that here. So I'm gonna bring my printout with me so that I have all the information right beside me. And then I am going to start to lay out my fabric. And I want to lay out the fabric along the lines on this board. So. Of course, the skirt piece needs to be cut on the fold, so I folded it over, so this is 15 inches, which is what it needs to be. This should be 15 inches, and then I'm gonna need to cut it 37 inches long, so from the top of the board all the way to the 37 mark right here. I've lined the fold up along this line right here, and then I'm just gonna take my scissors and cut along those lines in order to cut that piece. So I'm gonna cut right along here at the 37 line. And sometimes you can see through the fabric depending on the fabric that you have and sometimes you just kind of uh, weight it down and then use your fingers to carefully pull it back and make sure that you're cutting along those lines. Um, I know some people will also take like Taylor's chalk or disappearing marker and trace it on top. Um, if any of those things make you feel more comfortable or if you're a beginner seamstress, I would highly recommend those. You have to remember I've been doing this for 30 years and so I'm quite comfortable doing it this way, but that doesn't mean that that's the way that works best for you. Since I folded this in half exactly at the 15 inch mark, I can just cut right along this selvage edge because I know that that's going to make it um, 15 times 2. So I just cut all the way across down here. And then what I have left is evening up this edge right here as I trim off the top of this apron. Now, that is the basic idea for doing the rest of the pieces for this apron. The one thing I wanted to mention was the straight of grain. So remember, the straight of grain lines always run parallel to your selvage. So your selvage is that edge of the fabric that is along the width edges of it, not the length edges of it. And it's the edge that does not unravel. So it's the edge that's not cut. When it's woven, it's woven so that that edge does not unravel. And so all of your straight of grain, when you're cutting everything, needs to be parallel 
to that selvage line. So like this long piece right here that's remaining would be perfect for cutting out some of those long skinny pieces that have the straighter grain parallel to the selvage, such as the waistband, the ties, and the shoulder straps. So I could probably get one or two of those things out of this piece right here. All right, the very first step on your apron is to take the waistband ties and the shoulder straps. If they are not already perfectly pressed, you want to press them. I say perfectly pressed, might have a tiny bit of wrinkles still in them, but in general, you want most of the wrinkles out so that they're flat. And then you're going to fold them and pin them lengthwise because you're gonna stitch along the edges. I'm gonna show you which edges you're gonna stitch along and you are going to then turn them right side out. So if you have been sewing for very long, I'm sure that you have done some sort of straps or ties at some point and you're completely perfectly familiar with this process that I am talking about and you can just skip right ahead through this part of the tutorial and go on to the next part, but I do wanna show it in case I have some beginner seamstresses watching because aprons are great projects for beginner seamstresses and so that's why I want to make sure that I go over everything in detail for you just in case some of you are beginner seamstresses. So you're going to pen all along that edge and then on the waistband ties which are the longer of the two you're going to sew along one edge. And so you're going to basically sew in an L shape. You're going to sew and then sew up. And then you're going to do the same thing on the other waistband tie. Pin right sides together. I should have said that first, right sides together. It's a little hard to tell on my fabric because it is a solid and it's the same color on both sides. But if you are working with a fabric that has two different sides, make sure that you're pinning right sides together. You're pinning in that L shape on your waistband ties, and then you're going to stitch a half inch seam along there. And then on the shoulder straps, you're only going to sew the lengthwise size. There is no L shaped seam on the shoulder straps. You're just gonna sew the lengthwise seam and then turn them right side out. Okay, so now that these straps are all sewn down the edge, I wanted to show you guys how to turn them the right side out. Once again, if you have been sewing for any length of time, I am sure you already know this. This is just in case I have beginner seamstresses watching this video. So the ones that are open on one end, you want to take something like a safety pin and run it I like to run it in the actual seam so that it doesn't damage the fabric on the end, whereas the seam is more sturdy because it's multiple layers of fabric. You want to run it in there and then flip it inside the channel and then just start gathering it on there and pulling it. And it'll slowly turn inside on itself as you do that. Now, for the P 
pieces that have the L-shaped seam, you can't do that because only one end is open. So my favorite trick for that, there's just, there's different tricks, and if you don't like my trick, you can definitely look it up on YouTube. I'm sure there's a lot of other seamstress out there that will tell you how to do this. But my favorite trick is I take a dowel rod. I always have extra dowel rods around because I use, I do all kinds of crafts and I use them for different things. And I've used them in my classroom as a teacher. And so I will find an extra dowel rod I have around. You start to kind of turn that inside on itself. And then I just set that on there. And then I just start pulling down. And then it starts turning on itself. The nice thing about the dowel rod too is you can use it to kind of push out your corners right here. Um, usually it will push them out nice enough that they actually pivot. Um, sometimes if it's a really thick fabric or it's being super stubborn, like this part right here, you have to get an actual turner tool and stick it up in there to get it to uh, totally square. But in general, you can get the dowel rod to manipulate it. And then you're just gonna pull it, and then it's completely turned right side out. And then all I've gotta do is press all these pieces. Okay, the next step that you wanna do is you want to first off take these waistband ties, now that they're all pressed out, and just put them off to the side. I'm gonna put them on the pile with my other pieces that I have not used yet. And you're gonna take the shoulder strap pieces that you have, and you are going to put them in the bodice. So of course, let's press our bodice so that it's nice and smooth as we work with it. I firmly believe that one of the ways to have a good finished result in your sewing is to constantly press everything. I press everything constantly. I press the fabric before I cut it, I press it after I cut it, I press it every time I sew a seam. Okay, so we want to put these straps on next, and we want them to be right on the edge of the bodice panel. And the easiest way that I have found to do something like that is I'm actually going to put the straps to the side just for a second, and I'm going to pin these two right side together. So I'm going to take them, make sure they're all flat, and I'm going to pin their sides. So we're going to pin up the sides and sew those first. Instead of sewing one big U seam, we're going to sew the sides first. And then that will give us a guide for exactly where to place the shoulder straps so that they're right there on the edge and they're not slightly inside the edge or getting caught in the seam when I'm sewing it because if I sew this separately, it's already done. Okay, now that I have the two side seams of the bodice sewn in, I'm going to attach in the shoulder straps. So I want to put them inside here. And the way I'm gonna do this in order to be able to make sure that it matches right up along the edge is I'm going to take this shoulder strap and I'm gonna put it right snug against the edge right there, okay? Now, I like to take the side of the shoulder strap that has the seam to put up against the edge here. And so I'm gonna, I take that side, I put it right there, and I'm gonna pin it to the first layer just so I make sure I get it in place exactly where I want. And I need to make sure it matches up all the way down because that way where the seam comes a half inch down, it's still matched up. If you just match it up right there, it'll slide over. So pin it nice and secure, pin the other place, and then you're gonna take the top layer Fold it over nice and tight. And you're going to, don't remove the pens that you already put in because then you risk messing up your work. Just add more pens on top and pull it nice and tight. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So I'm gonna get my other shoulder strap. Same thing, take, this, take the seam side put it up, butt it up against the seam inside here. So I'm gonna pull it through, so it's on the top edge of the bodice, butt it up nice and tight against this seam, and pin, and pin. 
and then I'm going to take this on top, pull it nice and tight, put more pins. I firmly believe you can never have too many pins and that you can never press too much when it comes to sewing. If you want a good end product, you need to make sure that you are constantly pressing and you're using plenty of pins. Take the time to pin it and it will usually save you a lot of ripping out. So just pin it all the way across the top, just like that. And then you're ready to sew this seam all the way across. Okay, so I have the shoulder straps attached, pressed out, remember to do your pressing every time. And then now I'm going to attach my underbust band. So what I wanna do is find the center of everything. So I'm going to take my bib and I'm going to fold it in half and mark the exact center with a pen. So I have that. And then I'm going to take my waistband. I have them laid flat together because I pressed them out together. And so I'm not even gonna bother to separate them yet. I'm gonna leave them exactly together, fold them exactly in half, mark the exact center. Now, patterns a lot of times will come with these things marked for you. However, I always make sure when I'm doing this, because if I don't, there can be little changes in the pattern as I'm sewing with it. So maybe I cut something just barely slightly different, or maybe I sewed one seam just barely larger than the other. I always check the middle and things like that myself so that I can make sure that it's still accurate. So now that I have all my middles matched, I'm going to match all of them right here. So one goes on the front side of my apron bib. I'm gonna pin it on and then I'm going to, and see I don't remove that center pin so that I still have it to match to. And then I'm gonna flip this and remember right sides together, match this up exactly, and then I'm gonna finally remove that and pin all the layers together. And then I'm gonna bring this out and pin all of the layers together along the bottom edge of this apron bib. All right, so now that I have all of this pinned together, I'm gonna just sew that seam straight, one and a half inch along the bottom. All right, so the bib of the apron is now completed. We have the shoulder straps attached, we have the underbust band attached, and the next step is going to be attaching the apron skirt. So you want to hem three edges of your apron skirt piece. I have a serger or an overlocker, and so I have just overlocked all three edges. And then what I'm gonna do is press those edges over a half inch. Now, if you do not have an overlocker or a serger, you can either double press them a quarter inch and that'll still take up your half inch, or you can finish them in some other way, such as zigzagging or other things like that. And then I'm gonna press all of those edges and pin them all in place and then stitch them down. For this next step, you wanna see exactly where you want your skirt. How far around do you want your skirt to go? So you're just gonna kind of place the apron bib on yourself kind of in general where it's gonna fit. Um, and then you're gonna make sure it's pretty centered and you're gonna pull these bands up kind of like they were getting tied and then you're gonna take pens and decide where you want them to go. And if you look at the fashion plates and you look at Eleanor's apron, Sense and Sensibility, they come kind of right around here at the side seam or maybe just a little bit past. So decide how far you want it to come. And then I'm just gonna take pens and run them on either side. The reason I'm gonna do both sides is because even though I ha think I have it centered on my body, I don't know that for sure. And so if I do both sides, then once I run this pin in, I can take it off. 
I can fold it exactly in half and see if they match. And as you can tell, I did a pretty good job. They're pretty close. And then I'm just going to make sure that they match exactly. over just a bit and then I will gather my skirt to this section so right sides together I'll pull up and gather my skirt to this section right here So the next step that you need to do is you need to fold under the inside facing of the under bust band a half of an inch and you need to press that in. So before you seam up these edges right here, which I'll show you how to do in a minute, you want to attach your waistband ties. So you're going to come to the edge of your underbust band, you're going to come to the outside one, not the lining one that you pressed under, and you're going to butt the edge of that right up against the top edge of your underbust band, just like we did when we attached the shoulder straps to the bib. I'm going to pin it nice and flush, and pin it nice and flush again. And then you're just going to stitch a half inch right here. The side of the waistband tie that has the seam is the one that I put down. So the folded side is the side that I put on the top edge. That's just how I've always done it. I don't necessarily have a strong rationale for it. I just have always done it that way. It just seemed to make more sense to me. Butt it up against. Make sure it's nice and flush pin it in place, and then you're going to stitch those down with half inch seams. Okay, now that you have that in there, you're going to press everything inside. You're going to press everything inside right here. Once again, this is stitched, so it already has the half inch basically made for you. So press that inside. I'm going to press this back up so that that seam line is nice and good in there. Now that we have that done, we need to finish off the excess edge of this band right here. Obviously this part will flip in and go inside here and cover that seam. I prefer to whip stitch mine if you want a top stitch. If you don't mind having the top stitching showing, that's another way to do it. I prefer mine whip stitch. But we've got to finish these raw edges here. So I'm going to flip this out. and match and pin these edges. And then what I'll do is I'll stitch in this ditch that I have created with my pressing. And then pull everything through. Once you have stitched that, of course you're going to pull all of that right side out and you're going to press it all nice and neat. You also need to pin this part in place in preparation for stitching it. Like I mentioned before, you can either whip stitch these places or you can top stitch them. If you're going for a historically accurate look with this apron, I would definitely whip stitch them in place. If you are doing this for a history bounding apron and you want to save time where you do not like whip stitching, either one, then I would say feel free to top stitch them in place because that's not going to affect the look. So you want to pin this band in place as well in preparation for either top stitching or whip stitching all of this in place.
Congratulations! If you are sewing along with me, you are almost done with your apron. However, if you have skipped ahead to this part because you saw my note about sizing, I'm going to go over sizing right now, as well as showing you how to deal with the adjustable shoulder straps in the back and where to place your buttons and buttonholes. You can see how the apron fits me. And for reference sake, I am five foot nine with a bust of 42, a waist of 35, and hips of 41 inches. I am short-waisted compared to my height, and I am very narrow-shouldered. If you measure my front width, I actually wear only about a size eight according to my front width and my shoulders and my neck. However, because of my bust and my waist, I tend to fit more into size 18. That can be your reference or your guide for kind of how this looks on me. So as you can see, the bib comes just to the edge of the bust. It comes right above the top, which is about where your Regency neckline would fall. You can compare it to this picture right here of me wearing it over a Regency dress. The length for my purposes is too short. I would need to add about five inches. If you look at the fashion plates, the aprons fell only a few inches above the hem of their dresses. And this one is falling a good six to eight inches off of the floor, which would make it a good probably about five or six inches above the hem of my Regency dress. You can see the fullness is just about right right here. You can see that the apron comes just about to the side seams and covers what it needs to cover. You can see where the underbust band ends right here. And you can see how much space the bow takes and how about how much tail space the bow tails have, the tie tails have. Now, you can choose to make yours crisscross like I have, which I've done because I have smaller shoulders. I would highly recommend that if you have smaller shoulders. And the historical fashion plate I found does show it crisscrossed. However, you can also choose to make yours just go straight up and over. This is where the adjustable feature comes in for those of you that followed the pattern exactly. Obviously, based on your body measurements, the underbust band may hit in a slightly different place and the shoulder straps may hit in a slightly different place on you. And so you can mess around with how you want to pin these. So what I did was I tied on this part and then flipped the straps over, crisscrossed them. If you don't want them crisscrossed, just do them straight over and then pin them exactly where I wanted them. So I highly recommend that you play around with those shoulder straps in order to get them exactly where you want them. Because I'm wearing it over a modern day outfit, the shoulder straps are just about the right length right here. However, when I wear it over the Regency outfit, I would actually need to shorten the shoulder straps a little bit to have this underbust band hit right on my underbust when I'm wearing the stays. So that's something to keep in mind too. Are you going to be wearing this apron over your modern garments or will you be wearing it over your Regency garments? And then of course, try it on over that and adjust the straps as you need them. Now for the purposes of sizing, if you are quite sure that this is going to be too small or too large for you, let me talk you through how to adjust the sizing. The width of the bib when it is finished is 11 inches and you can see where that hits on me. You can take in a measuring tape and measure 11 inches on the center of your body and see where it hit on you. The height of the bib when it is finished is six inches. Once again, that is because you want it to fall below the Regency neckline. If you look at the fashion plates and Regency necklines in general were extremely low. They wore chemis sets underneath them or fichus. They wore spencers over them, but the actual neckline of the dress was usually pretty low. So therefore you have to make the apron neckline low as well. Those are the basic measurements for that. The underbust band when it is finished is 30 inches. As you can see, that leaves about four or five inches of gap on the back of me. Obviously, if you are larger or smaller, it will leave a larger or smaller gap. 
that should be okay because the ties can take it up. And as you can see, they're plenty long on me. But if you think that it's not going to be quite big enough for you, or you think it's going to be way too big for you, obviously you can shorten this band. The width of the skirt is meant to gather at about one and a half times. So I gathered it up to about 18 inches across the front here. If you are wanting to gather it to something that is much wider, say you're wanting to gather it up to 24 inches, you may want to add a little bit of inches on the side so that you can retain the same amount of fullness here. If you're not worried about retaining this amount of fullness, you just want a tiny bit of gathers, you can leave it the same width. And then of course, you can easily lengthen or shorten the apron to however you need it for your height and where you want it to fall. Obviously, once again, this is where the question of, are you making this to wear with your Regency outfit or is this just a history bounding piece? Where, where do you want the length in relation to your purpose for the apron? With those tips, you should be able to easily alter the apron. Now, I want to say a word of reassurance. If you are a beginner seamstress, this apron should fit one size all. You just need to follow the steps I've given you so far in the tutorial. However, if you are a more advanced seamstress or you're looking to fine tune your fit, definitely use these tips to make it exactly the way that you want it to fit. And as always, feel free to comment with questions below or contact me on social media if you have specific questions about how to alter this to fit your body measurements. In order to make these apron straps exactly the length that you need them, you're going to leave them pinned and slip this off over your head. Remember they slant this way. And so what I'm going to do is I am going to just trim it even with the edge. Be very careful that you do not accidentally cut your underbust band when you're doing this. If you are more comfortable just drawing the line on there, I would highly recommend you use something like Taylor's chalk or a disappearing marker. And you're going to trim this at an angle. And then I would do the exact same thing on this side. And what I'd like to do is I just take that piece I lay it on here and I use that as my guide to trim off any excess. Now I need to finish this edge. I am going to just overlock it or serge it. If you do not have an overlocker or a serger, you can zigzag it. Or if you really want a nice finish, you're going to flip this inside and press this down an eighth inch to a quarter of an inch all the way around. And then either top stitch that closed or hand stitch it closed. So you want to go ahead and finish that edge. And then the next thing that you want to do is you're going to run buttonholes on this strap. So I would run the buttonholes parallel with the strap right here in the center and stitch them the size of the buttons that you've chosen and you're going to actually put the button on the inside of the strap and attach this on the inside which is why it does not matter how you finish off this inside edge because this inside edge will be hidden underneath this underbust strap and it will lay about like so Obviously, if your underbust is a little larger or smaller and you need these in a little different place, you could move them in or out a little bit. All right, so I have finished the buttonholes and the buttons. I wanted to show you guys exactly what that looks like so that you can see a visual as you do your own. So the buttonholes are put right there in the center of the straps, parallel to the sides of the straps, and then the buttons are shown toward the top edge of that underbust band so that the bottom edge of these shoulder straps are not sticking out underneath the band. Remember this is totally adjustable. If you get it completed and it's a little bit too large, obviously you can just move your buttonhole up a little bit and trim off more off of your shoulder strap. I hope that you have found this tutorial helpful. 
as well as the downloadable pattern. I haven't gotten any video yet of the apron in action. However, I have gotten a few photos of me modeling it. I actually used this apron as a giveaway for my Instagram this past week. If you have enjoyed the tutorial today and are interested in more tutorials of this type, as well as the accompanying downloadable pattern and instructions, please let me know in the comments below because I will be deciding if I'm going to do more tutorials like this or not based on you guys' comments. So definitely let me know if you would like to see more of these. I may even eventually offer some for a price with a full-size downloadable pattern. So if you are interested in any of those options, definitely let me know in the comments below. If you have enjoyed today's video and found it helpful in your sewing journey, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.